Are you trying to figure out the best way to ensure a steady income after your retirement without risking your capital? And if you are a government employee thinking about resigning, are you wanting to know how to get the steady income again without risking your capital? Are you concerned about volatile markets, wondering what would happen if there's a crash and you could run out of money? Now, how would you cope with the situation? See, these are questions that haunt most of us when it comes to the brink of retirement or again, GEPF members on the brink of resignation. Now you've worked hard your entire life and the last thing you want is for your hard-earned money to run out when you need it the most. Now suddenly an insurance company or financial advisor presents you with an option, an option that seems like it answers all your fears. It's called a life annuity with capital preservation. In essence, you invest your capital, the insurance company pays you an income for as long as you live. And when you pass away, they return the exact capital amount to your beneficiaries. It almost seems like you're getting your income for free. Sounds too good to be true, right? And you might be wondering, what's the cash? In today's video, I'll uncover the hidden truths behind life annuities with capital preservation. I'll go through the fine print that you need to understand before making a decision that could significantly impact your financial future. Now let's get started as I turn over to the iPad. I first wanna give you an understanding as to where this picture comes in, right? Where does money actually move? Now remember, you have a pool of capital. This capital could be from a pension fund. It could be from a provident fund. It could even be from a retirement annuity. Or if you're a government employee, this could be coming from your approved fund, right? Because you're moving away from GEPF and you've transferred into an approved fund. So it could be from any of those sources. Now, you are entitled from this capital. You can pull out a pool of it, one third, and you can access that one third in cash. And this video is not aiming at that. This video is gonna be focusing on the two third portion here. So here's the two third portion. Now there are five options that you can invest in in order to get an income for life. One of it is what is called a life annuity with capital preservation. So I'm gonna explain the five options, but I want you to be mindful. I'm referring to the two third component here, right? Not the one third component. So let's draw this again. Your two third component. We'll list this here. This is your two third. And the one option is what we call a, what is called a capital preservation. Now let's go into some of the details of capital preservation. What exactly is being offered here? The first thing that you are being provided with, and I'll list them in, you are able to get an income for life. Meaning you're able to earn an income for as long as you live. If you live to 80, you're earning the income to 80. If you live to 100, you're earning it to 100. So that income is continuing for as long as you live. Now, depending on how the option is structured, you can design again on the amount of income that's starting at the beginning, right? How much of capital that is there. But usually with this type of income, and here's the first point that I want you to be mindful of, usually with this type of income, it is fixed. And what I mean by fixed is there is no increase. Now, I'll go through all of this fine print one step at a time so that you can understand each of the components, right? Now, the next thing I want you to be mindful of is in addition to the income for life, what the insurance company is saying is whatever your capital is, they will still pay that capital in the event of you passing away. Now, in my example, I'm going to use an amount of cover here. Let's just say an amount of, uh, well, your two third, let's just say in my example, works into five million, can be your figure. But for now, I just want to put a figure together so that we have an understanding. So here's what's happening. The insurance company is saying they're going to provide you with an income for as long as you live. And at that time that you pass away, they're paying the same capital, right? They're paying the amount that you invested. And in my case, because I'm using 5 million, it's a 5 million payout. And that's going over to the beneficiaries, which means if you have a look at it, let's just assume that you live for 10 years, you could receiving this income over a 10 year period. And then the insurance company is still paying out the full capital that you first started with. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? And this video is designed to look at the fine print, what's happening behind the scenes. Now, one, I mentioned to you in terms of fixed income. Two, I want to mention to you in terms of a policy so that you understand the structure of this. So what's happening behind the scenes is the insurance company is taking away your capital. Very important for you to understand this. It's no longer your capital. They're taking away the capital. You're giving it to them. And in essence, they are in return offering you an income for life, right? So they're paying you an income for life. 
Now, here's the income that's going to start here. We'll list the income here. And because you're earning an income, it's important for you to know that that income is going to be taxed, right? So we have to minus tax. I'm going to show you how much comes into your bank account now. Now, in addition to this, what's happening behind the scenes, which is important for you to be mindful of, is the insurance company, let's assume your capital is 5 million. They are in essence taking a life cover policy for you for 5 million. See, this is why I wrote policy earlier. So they're taking a life cover policy for you for 5 million rand, the amount that you're starting off with, right? Now, again, in my example, I'm using 5 million. So you use the figure that's based on for yourself, right? I just want to give you the understanding. So they're taking out a life cover policy for 5 million rand. Here's the catch. The premium for that policy, you are paying for it. So they're making you to pay the premium for the life cover policy. Now, why I'm saying it's a bit of a catch, if you have a look at it, isn't that the way of the insurance company reducing risk? Right? They're reducing their risk because they have this amount of capital. That capital is theirs. They're able to invest that to do that as they please, and they can generate a profit from it. They're paying you an income for as long as you live. That can come from the proceeds here. And then they've backed themselves up with a life cover policy. So here's a premium on a policy, and that premium is being paid by yourself. Now, notice because the amount of cover that you have and also based on your age, you want to start to think about how the affordability of that policy, right? Again, let's assume you are 60 year old and you're taking 5 million rand cover. Chances are the premium is going to be pretty high. So what's taking place is before you receive your income, you are going to pay tax. You are going to pay the premium on the policy, which means the amount of money that comes into your bank account will be net of the above two, right? It will be net of the above two. That's what comes into your bank account afterwards. So I want you to be mindful of what exactly taking place here. Behind the scenes, this money is still going to be invested by the insurance company. You just can't get the proceeds of it, right? You can't get the growth of it because the agreement is they are paying you an income for life. Now, the next catch I want you to be mindful of, and I'm sharing all this to you not to say that it's a bad investment. I just want you to be mindful because usually when members or individuals reach out to me for assistance, this type of information is not explained. And once you get into the structure, you can't go back. There's no turning back. So you want to know exactly what's happening. When I mentioned to you about fixed premium, it's in essence working like this, right? You are earning a fixed income, meaning that income is, is set for life. Now, what's taking place here is around you, all your expenses could be growing up like this. So if you look at food, is going up. If you look at fuel, it's going up. Water, electricity, everything's going up. So you have expenses that are going to go up every single year. In the beginning, it seems like the income is quite good, right? It's enough for you to live comfortably. And it may last you a few years before you reach a stage that it becomes unaffordable. But I want you to be mindful that usually the income is fixed. If, and in some instances, insurance companies are able to do this. So they are in a position to give you an income that's increasing, but then they're going to start you with a lower income. So they start you with a lower income and that income has an increase. But notice what's happening. The higher your increase, the lower the initial income, right? So if you're going to say, hey, I want a 5% increase in my income every year, then you're going to start off here. Let's say you want a 10% increase in your income, then you're starting off even lower. But traditionally, capital preservation plans, there's no increase, meaning it's fixed. It's not going to increase at all. So there's some variations to this. This video is designed to give you an understanding of the basics of it. Now, why you want to be mindful of this type of structure is once you get into this solution, there's no turning back. You can't adjust it. You can't tweak it. You cannot go back into the insurance company to say you want to take a portion out. You want to take a lump sum. You want to adjust your income. You can't do any of that. Once this is set, it becomes cast in stone. There's no adjusting to the plan. Meaning, even if you, your advisor meets you every single year, every single month, every single day, there's still nothing that can be done to adjust it. So it makes it critically important for you right in the beginning, at the outset, to first make sure that this is the right solution for you. Now, remember what I shared with you earlier? There are five different solutions that you have here. And you want to analyze those five different solutions in advance before you get yourself committed. 
Now let's look at some of the good things that happen inside of this type of plan. The good that happens is, you know you are able to get a fixed income. So you don't have to be concerned about the markets. You don't have to be focused on investing, what's happening with the stock exchange. You don't need to be concerned about that because it's providing you with an income for life. Meaning it doesn't matter what the insurance company is doing with the capital, they can make a profit or a loss, but either way, you know you are able to get an income. So you know that that's coming through. The second thing that it does is it provides this life cover amount for your beneficiary. So you know that this amount is gonna be paid out. Now, when it comes to tax, what I want you to be mindful, because the money is actually the premium for the policy, right? The premium for the policy is being paid for money that's after tax. It means at the time that you close your eyes, the lump sum that's getting paid to your family is not taxed. Now, there are other alternatives to this that can structure this a lot differently, where you actually retain your capital and you don't lose out, as well as options for you to grow your capital. So your family could be left with an even bigger amount. And this is why I say it's critically important for you to understand these options first. Go and consider the five options that are available before you commit yourself into the two-third income. And make certain that you're creating a solution or the solution that you have is created specific to your situation. Not something else that's worked for another individual, but something that's based on your situation and working perfectly for you. So I hope you found the video helpful. Post comments below. Let me know what has been your awakening. What did you learn about this capital preservation option that you might not have known before? Also, if you know of other members or individuals who are needing this type of assistance or support, I encourage you to share the video with them so that they're able to get access to this free insights. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, I encourage you again to do that so that I'm able to provide you the content and you're able to receive it as soon as it's produced. I'll catch you in the next video.